Okay, this is the second part of the Nano Loop 2.3 tutorial, and let's get back into the software. In this part, we're going to look at controlling the volume of your sounds and different things that you can do to the pitch, and a quick introduction to the first menu. So, if we press uh, Start, you can see we get this menu at the bottom with five different icons. The Starting from the left, the little left pointing triangle icon controls the volume envelope. So basically how loud your, tra your sound is at the start, how long it continues to be loud for, that kind of stuff. Uh, the little note uh, controls the note, which is maybe kind of not too hard to endure. Um, the middle sine wave looking one does a whole bunch of different things depending on certain circumstances. Um, it controls the pitch, basically the pitch bend, like the pitch envelope of your note, so if your note bends up or bends down, how fast it does it. Um, it can control a couple of other things which we're not going to get into today. Um, the fourth one, the little downwards pointing arrow, controls various things that you can do with the filter and one or two other things as well. We're not really going to get into that yet. And the little bar with the white part on the left side, the black part on the right side, controls the um, panning and delay. Um, for the first part of this, we're going to look at the um, volume envelope. So what we're going to do for now is go back to our song that we made in the first tutorial. So press Start then press B on the file menu, uh, hold down B over R, press up, and you can hear our little song again. Press select, that will take us back out. We've actually got more notes than we need here for the moment, so we're going to lose a few of them. Um, press B, and then delete all except for the very first one using A. Um, as you can see we've got our central kind of cursor square and we've got two little squares, one on the bottom of the top left box, one on the right of the top left box, top left step, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you move over the top left square, hold down the B button and press down you can probably hear the note is getting quieter. If you press up, you can probably hear it's getting louder. If you press left, the note will last longer. If you press right, the note will finish very, very quickly. Um, this is the volume envelope. So we'll put this maybe around the middle, and we'll have it lasting maybe a medium amount of time. Um, if you press start, it basically reverses the volume envelope. The vertical box, um, which is now on the right hand side, controls the final volume. If you press left and right, it will move the right hand box further to the right or left, surprisingly. Um, if it's all the way to the left, it means it will reach the maximum volume very quickly. If you move the box all to the right, it will reach the maximum volume much, much slower. So, we're actually going to use this in combination with the pitch command to try and make a kick drum. So press start once more. And maybe make it a little bit shorter by moving to the left again. Um, if we press select and then move to the right twice, to the little sine wave looking icon, then press B. This is perhaps a little bit difficult to see at the moment, but this is two different horizontal bars, and this controls the pitch. I'm just going to move the... hold down B, press down a couple of times, and you can probably hear that this is pitch bending up. And it's doing it pretty quickly, so what we're going to do is hold down B again, press right a few times, and you can see it's now bending much, much, much slower. So if we have the 
second bar more or less at the left. The pitch bend is almost instantaneous. If we have it further to the right, it takes a longer time. If you go all the way to the right, there is no pitch bend. Um, you might have guessed we can use this to make a kick drum. At the moment, it's pitch bending down kind of slowly, so... Sorry, pitch bending up kind of slowly. We want to make it pitch bend down. So if we move the left bar up, pitch bends down, if you can hear that. Um, if you move the bar to the left, you can probably hear it starting to bend faster and faster. Now, this is a little bit too high pitched for a kick drum at the moment, so how do you think we're going to make it lower? Press start once more, move once to the left to go to the note, hold down B, and if you remember that little dot at the top of the box controls the octave, so just for a little bit of practice. That's now much too high for a kick drum. You see it getting perhaps a little bit more kicky? Um, it's not perfect, but it'll do for now. So if you press A, this will delete and copy our kick drum. Now we have no sound. Press A again. The kick drum is back. Put down a few more kicks. It's not a perfect kick drum, but it'll do for now. Um, I'm going to show you one more trick. I would actually like this kick drum to be just a little bit lower, and we've now got four of them, so changing each of these by hand will be a bit of a pain. Press select. Um, you'll be highlighted on the little note square. If you hold down A, press left and right. This will move all of the notes at the same time. If you move it maybe all the way to the left, perhaps one note from the left, that will give us a nice little kick drum and it will adjust all of them at the same time. Same way if you're interested, if you press right once, this will take us to the pitch envelope and you can alter all of these at the same time as well. So we've lost our kick drum sound now, but... You've got sort of slightly different options depending on how fast you want the pitch bend to be. Um, I think this is maybe kind of good for us at the moment, so I think we will perhaps save this. Oh, actually, one more thing that I think you might want to check out. Something else that you can set for each sound is you can set the panning. If you go all the way to the right, um, you can see at the moment these icons are all panned centrally. If you press select, hold down A, Press right, left, you will hear it only coming out of the left side. Press to the right, you'll hear it only coming out of the right side. So if you want to, you can have kick drums on the left, kick drums on the right. Press B, Ooh, press B, and you can change the sound, for, sorry, change the panning for individual kicks. Um, I think we might be able to use this for a track, so we're going to save it for now. Press select once. Press select a second time to go to the secondary menu. Go all the way to the left. Again, there's a few other things on this menu that we're going to look at a little bit later. Um, press B. That will take us into the file menu. Now, we've actually got a song saved here already. Um, so move one step to the left. Uh, one step to the right, sorry. Hold down B. Press down. And we have now saved our kick drums. Just a little bit of revision. If you go to the column that's highlighted 1, hold down B and press up, this is our weird little song that we had, or weird little melody, I guess, that we had last time. Um, and we can play that if you want to, but hold down the cursor over 2, hold down B, press up, and we've got our little kick drums back. If you're interested, move over the slot 1 for the end channel, hold down B, press up, and we have our kind of little noisy rhythm track there as well. So this is all we're going to do for now for today. So this is all saved. Press select. Um, also, just for a little bit of fun, I thought I would recommend a Nano Loop 2.3 track at the end of each tutorial that I quite enjoy. So today, if you look on the notes on the right, you will see a track called Third Laser by Little Scale, all done in Nano Loop 2.3. Thanks for listening and watching. Bye for now.